Welcome to the Running For Real podcast, where each week we bring you a conversation designed to help you create positive change in your life, community and planet. It's a collective of conversations about running, the climate emergency and social justice. Running For Real is for the brave, for those with courage and vulnerability. United by our love of running, we're driving momentum towards some of the really tough challenges we're facing as humanity. So come join me, Tina Muir, and let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Running For Real podcast, episode 262. I do not think it is a coincidence today that my guest is here for number 262. That just seems perfect um, because he will be talking about the marathon, about his goals in the marathon. And he's just, he's become a new friend recently and he is such an awesome guy. I am really excited to introduce you to Tommy Runs. That is not his last name, but you'll hear us discuss that why uh, in the episode You are also going to get a really fun start to the conversation. Um, (laughs) This is another one of those where we started um, having a conversation. We decided to switch the camera, the recording on, even though we hadn't dived in in the typical way. Um, We are talking about a movie that we are going to create someday. It's just a really fun, lighthearted way to begin this episode. Uh, Tommy Runs is the owner of Chip Time Running Company. He's the host of the Run, Eat, Sleep podcast. And he is a runner. He is a just all round guy. And I, I'm obsessed with him. I can't stop um, learning about him, listening to him, checking in with him. Um, I just can't wait for you guys to get to know him. So without further ado, let's go meet Tommy Runs. Thank you to Beam for sponsoring this episode of the Running For All podcast. I've been talking a lot lately about Beam, how they are supporting many of us within the running community, allowing us to go chase our dreams and allowing us to be healthy and recover and be well while we are doing it. I've talked about the fact they have their Elevate performance, which is what I use in my races. I will be using it in my full races this year um, as a way to maintain electrolytes and keep my energy at a high level. So today I wanted to focus in a little bit on the recovery element. Now you can get a a variety pack that will come with the balance uh, performance and recovery, Um, but you can also get these separately. So I wanted to talk a bit about the recovery because that is the one I am having almost every day after my runs in the humid summer. So it's got this hydrating electrolyte powder that is formulated with non-GMO collagen peptides plus branched chain amino acids for support joint and muscle health. It tastes like a rejuvenating fresh lemon. And as someone who has talked a lot lot about not liking citrus, I love this flavor. I don't know what they did to it. I shouldn't say that. I don't know what what magic they um, have going on there, but it tastes delicious. It's so, so good. There's no added sugar. It's paleo and keto friendly if you are into that. And uh, it does not contain CBD. So if you are concerned about that, that is another thing to consider. So go check out the Elevate Variety Pack, the Elevate Energy and the Elevate Balance. You can get yourself 15% off your order by going to beam, B-E-A-M, tlc.com and use code TINA for 15% off your order. Or you can get 20% off your order if you are going for a subscription. And make sure you are keeping yourself hydrated. This is the time of year that we really get ourselves into trouble. So keep those electrolytes up. Keep your hydration going. Go to beamtlc.com and use code TINA. <laughs> Tommy, uh, let me first say welcome to the Running For A podcast. And then I'm going to explain why I'm <laughs> laughing as I'm saying this. Oh, uh, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we already pre-gamed this a little bit. I know. We're, we're starting this off very casually. So for the listener, Tommy and I were just, uh, we just jumped on the call and Tommy has this beautiful wall of shoes behind him. Uh, there's what? There's 15 pairs and there's I, a I, nice little gap in there that just doesn't really make sense. And is the OCD type A in me wants to like something in there but Tommy did say he would go get me a pair if it was bothering me enough but I I'm gonna let it go yeah I mean I have one right here I I could just take these headphones off and I could I could fill it in 
quickly. Let me let's see. Maybe halfway through the conversation, it may have I'll to. Be, I'll be like, all right, I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Every now and then, I'll just hold my hand like right in the spot, right where here. You know, does that bother you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. But we were talking about the fact that Disney should have. Like, l- let's hear your pitch. Let's well, see if I mean, any Disney executives almost, are listening. At first, when we started talking about this, I thought it was a you know silly idea. But the more I think about this, like and kind of go through the process, I'm almost scared to say it. So, this guys, this idea is 100. percent Like, can you copyright an idea? No, we're just. About a movie? I, I, don't, I, don't I want know. rights to this. We got rights to this. So, okay. it's a shoe movie, um, and it'd be about shoes and about running shoes in particular that just kind of. They're your favorite are shoes. Ranked for in little, hierarchy, according yeah, to they you. are ranked because my shoes are ranked by on the top level is the ones I like the most. Second level, a little less. Third level, a little less. They, I like them all, but just not enough, you know. Um, and then they slowly in the movie they would just slowly make their way down because I get a new shoe and I like that more. I still wear it, but just not as much. Mm. And then eventually, like you said, one of the shoes is going to end up being like the lawn mowing shoe, mm-hmm. and then poor guy out in the garage missing his brother because his brother stepped in poop that's the last thing he knows and he no longer has his brother with him hasn't seen him in months he was cutting grass one day looked up brother was gone and he's a single shoe in the garage by himself at one point this guy probably ran the detroit free press yeah he was a favorite shoe yeah him and his brother just one after one foot in front of the other you know <laughs> it would be a good idea though it like i be. think we need to figure this out so let's copyright again that at the end here and if any of you hear of a shoe movie that comes out about this? Tell us. Better get a mo- momentous, momentous, momentum going about the fact that this idea was developed here, and whoever stole that idea we needs need some, to just, go, just, go troll on this person if, yeah, just a uh, couple if they checks. do that. Yeah, I'll take a couple checks. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, no trolling needed. Just a few okay. checks here and there. Okay. All right. We'll we'll make sure that happens. Um, and uh, if any Disney executives are listening. Come, come speak to us. Yeah, because we have more. We have more, we have more ideas. Yes, absolutely. Like, that was so made up more. in ten seconds. That was yeah. That was just like the elevator pitch, shoe movie idea. Yeah. Um, if you think made, that's good, you you see what else we've got in store. So. Yeah, it would make it, it makes Toy Story look like yep. like an afterthought. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest movies of all time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, you never know. We could be, yeah. we could, we could be onto something here if we made Look, that up man. in ten seconds well, just I by mean, looking at a shoe wall. Legit, because I mean, toys. Everybody's had toys at one point, but everybody still has shoes. That's I have true. no more toys. You know, that's so true. Shoes yeah. last forever. Like, there's an 80 year old guy with like 27 pairs of New Balance somewhere. <laughs> That'd be like, wow, all white. That's a good idea. Oh. <laughs> All white, same style. <laughs> and then, like, every time he buys one, they go like, wait, what? It, are you me? <laughs> are you? Oh, my God. Are you me? My kids, my daughter has a book about penguins, um, and the penguins goes up to all the other penguins. and he, He's like, Mom, is this you? And the penguin's like, who are you? And oh. he goes up to another one. He's like, Dad. And he's like, get away from me, because they were like the same. So the same thing. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, same thing. Like, wait, are you the same as me? Are we twins? And then you think it's just the two set of twins and then another one and then another one. Year after year, this guy keeps getting the same yeah. shoe over and over. And you know what how comfortable to- those shoes got to be? Can you just keep going back for the same one? <laughs> well, apparently they are. Imagine how their little shoe minds explode when they see another person wearing that. Another oh, like, no. old person <laughs> we are we are out here. And then, <laughs> then you start, then you have like the clone theory where like you got the guy that's like, the shoe that's in the garage, like just tripping out. Like there's a bunch of us out here. I know it. (laughs) I I literally have tears in my eyes right now from this. I think we have to figure this out. I think you shouldn't air this part (laughs) because it's, it's, it's getting real. Like I've just, I just created a bank account as we're talking for this, just in case. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. This is amazing. What's this podcast about? Wearing shoes. (laughs) Forget we, the podcast. Wait, we're gonna, we're gonna. You can hear that boop exactly. noise. Yeah, now exactly. we're gonna be gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is the perfect example of why I absolutely adore you, and I am just, I just love watching and listening to anything you do. Um, and the best. This is a perfect example of why, but. Um, 
so not my co-host at uh, Running Real Eyes, Knox Robinson, and uh, Maria Vargas, who who works for me, have always been talking about vibe, energy. Like mm-hmm. they're always saying this, and I was always like, "What are you talking about? Like, what's vibe thing mean?" But I, t- you you embody that for me. That I just get this. Like I just like I said, love watching anything and everything you do. Um, just your personality is just so easy to love. So um, as much as that puts you on the spot and makes you feel weird, I just wanted to say that going into this. I just well, love what you're doing. Well, I appreciate it. I feel welcomed at this point in this. I didn't until then, but thank okay. you so much. Well, well, I'm glad <laughs> I did that next step. Thank you for that. Um, no, I do appreciate that a lot. Though. Yeah, no. I, and, and it's evident that other people feel the same way that I do. But so you managed to you know, speak about important topics, but you're always such a positive, uplifting person. You're real with things, yet you keep things in that positive vibe. Um, And so there's many things I want to go into today, uh, but I actually want to start with something that maybe you don't think I'm going to start with, being that I saw you post on social media recently about stepping away from everything for a minute to collect ourselves detaching, reevaluating, slow down and taking time for our well-being. I mean, that sounds so yogi wise. Mm-hmm. How did you get to that point? Because I need your secrets if you think like that. Um, yeah, like I don't think that I've even gotten close to actually perfecting it at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just feel like it's in the light, like in 2020, I, you know, I definitely... 2020 was a weird, weird year for me because, I mean, it was a weird year for a lot of people, but, um, my plans to, to qualify for Boston in April that of last year were, were put on hold because the glass city marathon was canceled or you know, postponed. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I just kept training, kept running. Cause I just really had this big goal of qualifying for Boston and I was going to do it no matter what. And I would just stay fit until, um, the next opportunity, like in the fall. Right. <clears throat> and it, turned into me overtraining and turned into me not paying attention to like all the little things that like runners are supposed to pay attention to. Um, and then I got injured. So I had a stress fracture in my left tibia or whatever that bone is, the one that goes down to your foot. I was the (laughs) Um, big one. Yeah. The, whatever. Yeah. That one, the one that hurt really bad, like the one that's (laughs) attached to your shin bone, I think. Um, and it, so I was end up being out for like two, three months, um, like solid from July to basically started back up in November. And during the ramp up back to like, oh, November's coming, I think I'm going to be able to run again. I started doing, you know, I wanted to do some type of strength training or something that was like very low impact. So then that led me into yoga. So I could do yoga poses and all this stuff with my injury. Um, so I just started doing that and that was like this kind of gateway to like, oh, this is really, this feels really good on my you know body, but it feels great like on the spirit or soul. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I just, that I went down that rabbit hole of YouTube where it's like yoga, 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 meditation. And I'm like, okay, well, let me just try this. Cause I've tried it before. Um, and it was just like, it just wasn't really, I tried, but I was really bad at it. I thought you needed to be, and I thought every time you did it, you should get better. Mm-hmm. You know, and you shouldn't have these crazy thoughts anymore while you're sitting still. And that just turned into like me realizing and I just started doing more research about, you know, meditation. And you're not supposed to be. I mean, I'm th- the best meditation folks out there, I'm sure that they probably can clear the mind very well. But for the average person who does it even every day has these random thoughts that pop up and you're supposed to just sit back, be still and kind of like just watch those thoughts happen and let them go or whatever, you know. Um, and that's where I kind of got locked into that. And so I started trying to bring mindfulness to running. So I would do little things before I'd run, take just a few minutes to kind of, um, like debrief myself on what I'm about to do, like what I'm about to do and, and connect with the body, connect with like the outside and say like, okay, here we are, we got six miles and just kind of take a moment to not just go from work chair to outside to run. So it was like work chair outside, sit or stand or something, take a moment to just take a breath and relax for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then that just kind of opened up my mind and thoughts to, we just need this every day. You know, we need, like, even if I don't do it every day, I know, like, I, I need to just pull back for a second because I know what type of person I am. I get 
wild. Like if I'm like about running, I'm all about running and all about the business or all about whatever. And then you don't, if you don't take a moment to step back, you don't take a moment for yourself, but then it's easy for you to just separate everything. And then your family's like, yo, what, what, what about us? You know, yeah. you need to take a step back from where you are. Um, Pharrell said something really recently and said something about zooming out. You know, like you have your lens zoomed way in on something. You can see all these fine, minute details, um, Microsoft, even, you know, not Microsoft, uh, like microscope type esque mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's great. But then if you take a moment to zoom out, you can see like this bigger picture. You see the beauty of the whole thing. Um, and I think that for me, you know, meditation and taking a time to step back and be still before a run, after a run, middle of the day instead of lunch or something, it just helps me take that step back to kind of free up a little bit because it gets a little crazy when you're so close to everything that you do. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many multitaskers out there that just go close, close, close to oh, all these yeah, different things yeah. that never take a step back to see like the big picture. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned about a Boston qualifier. I think that actually becomes that relates to this in so many ways for a lot of people that they get in their head, they want to be cute or they get in their head that they want to break four hours or want to break five hours or want to do something and very similar to you end up overtrained or end up putting too much on it or end up so like banging the head against a wall, trying the same, like the whole insanity thing, trying the same thing over and over, hoping for different results. Um, when actually, yeah, the more we can step back and especially in terms of running, it's quite funny. I mean, you could probably speak to this with wanting to run a BQ. Yes, it's okay to have something you really want. But then like, if you look at the course of, yeah, your 80, 90, maybe a hundred plus years of life. And you think about those like three years where we were, you know, I really, really want this so badly that I have to try yeah. so hard and I have to keep trying. Um, and even just doing that makes me like made my muscles tired, just like talking like that and tensing up. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? Right. It's something that you are doing for fun. You're doing it because you want to. And yet you're so, yeah, like you said, zoned in on like, well, should I have half a bar or a whole bar before I run? You know, like the yeah. tiniest of details. Yeah. So yeah, speak to that in terms of the, the running and, and what has last year and that approach taught you about going into races in the future? Um, I think it was, I just felt more grateful um, coming back into it and not just, I mean, obviously like I, like I can't lie and say like I ever lost like this insane desire to qualify for Boston because I didn't, mm -hmm. but then it just took a moment it, incorporating like mindfulness and meditation to the new running or getting back into running it just made the whole experience just a much more grateful, um, gratitude based mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I, the further I get away from like this injury and having be cute now, mm -hmm. it was like, it, it, I have to remind myself that I'm very happy that I'm able to run and very happy that I'm able to run this quickly, you know, over the distance. Right. Um, so I, th I think it's just, going forward, I've, I have my goals, which we all think we should all have goals are very important. You know, it's just that I have to remind myself how grateful and how much of a gift, like any of these things are like outside of running. If you have a goal, that's, I don't know, to climb Mount Everest or write a book, I, whatever, right. It's the fact that we're able to set that goal and maybe even go after it or start the process is just a gift in itself. So it just, it doesn't say that I'm not saying don't have a goal and have this burning desire to do something, but the, the gratitude part in that and taking a step back a little bit from it makes you just kind of prioritize it differently, you know, cause we're, it happens every day. Like we get so locked into something that everything, I mean, not everything, but just, it's so easy for us to dismiss little things here and there. Like just back to running, it's easy to just dismiss the foam roller, you know, when everything seems fine. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's easy to, to, to not do the things, the, the workouts and stuff like that, because they suck and they're small or whatever. Oh, I'm just going to skip today because you're so focused on like just getting out, getting that run in. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take a step back and realize like, oh, I was injured at one point or, oh, I could be injured or um, this 
this, you know, going on this trip with my friends, maybe he's going to stop me from writing this book I wanted. I was, you know, I'm going that direction. You just have to take a little step back to see if everything that you're doing is going in the, to the, to, in the right direction and is balanced as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think that balance is like Rich Roll has said it before, like about balance. It's like, it's, I just don't think that it's possible. If you're really going after something, you're not going to be balanced at every moment of your life. You know, like there's going to be two weeks, six months, a year or whatever, where things are just kind of out of whack. But as long as you people, the people around you, you communicate yeah. um, that this is what we're, this is what I'm trying to do. And you have people on board with you. That's the goal. And make sure you like nail those deadlines, you know, like, cause people in your life don't necessarily, they shouldn't have to say, Oh, I want to be cute. So you're going to have to wait two years before I can like be a person again. Um, you know, I'm rambling now, but I just think it's like, you got to have that balance as much as possible. And the only way you can do that is by looking at it a little differently, yeah. go after your goals like crazy. But if you have like gratitude in the process, it'll, it'll expand to like being able to pull different people in. Like my kids now run with me more often mm. and they ride their bikes more than they did before because I was so like, I don't want you to slow me down. Yeah. Like, I, you know, it's just bad. Like I just, you know, it was in a good place, but just from the, coming in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. now they ride their bikes with me and it's just, it's just different. And I am much more appreciative of the process now. That's so cool. And how many kids do you have? Two. Two. And yeah, four, mm -hmm. daughter's 14, son is 10, about to be 11. So. Oh, so the 14 year old still wants to be around you? That's impressive. No, no, not really. Um, <laughs> okay. it's, nobody said that she wants to be there. It's more of like, a, um, hey, um, we're, grab your bike. We're going. Uh, she's like, oh, I got like, Bad. You know, yeah, it's like, but I can just, no, no, we're just going to go. Because, like, you know, especially nowadays, like, you know, kids nowadays, like I'm 78 years old. <laughs> Um, and back in my day, like kids rode the bike or the bikes more often, you know, yeah. we didn't have like iPads and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just try, I try my best to like, I don't make her run cause she doesn't, she does not want to do that. My son will run with me for like a little bit, but she doesn't want to do the run thing. So I was trying to force that, mm, but I'm like, really okay, let's, let's not sacrifice the relationship. You yeah. Know? That's good. You recognize that though. I'd love to, you said, uh, there about, um, I can't remember exactly what it said. You said something about like doing what is good for long term, thinking about uh, making the right choices. And um, I haven't um, I haven't mentioned yet that you. So on your social media profile, it says you've been sober for four years, vegan mm -hmm. for three years, running for three years mm -hmm. as some of the things you have on there. Um, the sober for four years, if you're comfortable for talking about that, like I would love to hear how that ties into running. And when it comes to, yeah, thinking about make, pushing your um, life in the direction you want it to be, how did that time, uh, yeah, push you towards where you are now and how did you get out of it? So let's just dive into that wherever you want to begin with that. Well, whenever, it was someone, whenever someone asked me about like my running journey, like where did it start? You know, like I, it always like for me starts in 2018 when I mm -hmm. was like blindly said yes to running a half marathon, you know. Um, but then it, I always try to start in 2017 in January when I decided that I would give this like non, um, alcohol based <laughs> lifestyle a, cho a, a non chance. Non alcohol based. Yeah, non alcohol based. Yeah. Like I was literally alcohol based. Like if you read the ingredients on my, on my, on my body, it would say the alcohol based product. Mm -hmm. Um, but so it was like, it, it was, I, I came to a point where I realized that I didn't have control over like whether I drank or not. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like, you know, some people drink for like a celebration. Some people just drink a little bit or whatever. I was like, I'm awake. We are drinking, you know? Um, so it was a, more of a lifestyle choice at that point, like real deal. Um, as much as I run, I drank, you know? Um, so it was like, it was a point where I just needed to a big change in that, in that, at that time. Um, and, doing something at that point in my life, that was the hardest thing that I had ever done. Absolutely. You know, um, and it wasn't necessarily like, Oh my God, like every day I needed a drink or wanted one at that point. I had made a, I had made the toughest choice for me because I was, my life was so alcohol and that 
lifestyle was so tied up into like who I was, I thought, or who I thought I was at that time, that just the decision to stop was so firm and so drastic that like I had to find out who I was again. You know, like I didn't even know who like a sober Tommy like was or could be. I just knew I'd be boring. I knew I'd suck as a person. But then I'm like, oh, this, and I started finding out new things and just that perseverance to like every day make up, wake up and make that decision um, just played a really big role in like this quick like evolution of like who I was as a human being. And as soon as I stopped drinking about like a month into it, I'm like, I have like so much more energy. This is ridiculous. What am I going to do with it? So I started going to the gym and just like lifting weights because if you've been drink if you drink a lot all the time you get like this weird weird body <laughs> you know like for me i was like i gotta get in the gym we gotta tighten this thing up or whatever we gotta do right um so i started going to the gym very often and that was what i did a lot uh outside of like the alcoholics anonymous meetings and things um i went to the gym and, and just put a lot of energy into that because i just felt like i just needed to like reset and tell my body like hey we do care don't die on us you know mm -hmm. Um, so I did that. And then that led into the next year. Um, my sister-in-law was like, Hey, um, let's do like a, a vegetarian thing for like two weeks or something like that. She said, well, yeah, sure. Whatever. Then I thought I was doing it for her. Cause I was like super fit and buff at the time. I'll do it. Sure. Whatever. And I've known a couple vegans. So like two days, two, three days into it, I'm like, well, I'm only eating cheese and eggs at this point. So um, let me just take that out and see what the difference is. And like two weeks later, I felt this like so much, uh, just sustainable type energy. Um, and going from drinking alcohol to not was a big shift, like huge, like energy change or shift or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then going vegan was like an extra boost. So I'm like, what's the, what is this? Like, how is that even possible? Um, that I could, that I could feel this more than the lack of, you know, Bombay Sapphire, whatever, you know? <laughs> um, and then I just said, Hey, I'll, I'll just keep going down this, this vegan road. Um, but sobriety has like going to an Alcoholics Anonymous in, in this road of sobriety has taught me so much about just like the process and it ties for me into running a lot because one of the biggest things when you go into that program is like take one day at a time, you know? Mm -hmm. And, with running and life in general, like if you, if you're worried about the past and the things you did or worried about like tomorrow and how am I going to, or how am I going to not drink for the next 20 years or something like that, then that's just too overwhelming. Oh, yeah. It's too much of a, it's just, it's too much. And then, so like, Hey, just, just don't drink today. You know, that's, that's your goal. Just wake up, don't drink today and go to sleep having not had a drink and then just do it again tomorrow. Um, and that process really ties into running for me yeah. because if you, you know, week 16 or week 16 weeks out from whatever marathon or whatever you're running, if you start thinking about like that time that you want to run that BQ or that four hours, or that five hours, whatever your goal is, if you start thinking about it on day one of training block, this is going to be a long ride for you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you just take today, go out, do your easy run today, go out, do your workout today, your long run, whatever it is, and just stay in like this moment. Uh, and then also, you know, the, the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is like, that's like, if somebody had just told me that maybe like earlier in life, you know, outside of the, the drinking thing, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Cause you can only control what you can control. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. You know, you can't control the weather on race day. You can't do any of that stuff or whatever. It's just take a step back, realize you only can control you in this moment. You can't control you tomorrow. You can't control you, you yesterday. You can only control you like right this moment and just live in that and just make the best decision next right decision like now. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I mean, things are, things are going to happen. You know, you're going to have bad whatever juju or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, you can't control that either. Yeah. Just do your thing and take the next step one foot after the other, all the running phrases that apply to life as well. And you're there. 
Thank you to Inside Tracker for sponsoring this episode of the Running Through a Podcast. I have been using Inside Tracker for many years when I was an elite athlete. It allowed me to keep on top of what was going on within my body so I could really maximize my potential. It was actually, it did indicate some of the signs that I had going on. Things weren't quite right. And I, as much as I would try to change them, I obviously didn't understand the biggest thing that I needed to work on, which now I thankfully do. And my numbers are in the optimized zone. So it shows. I love that Inside Tracker gives us those indicators of what is going on. It also gives you foods to add into your diet to change those numbers and also some information about the science, what you can do to change things to be where they need to be. And also you can keep track of things over time. Each uh, of your markers goes down in a little graph so you can follow along with how your body is doing and get yourself closer and closer to the optimized as you work through. It was founded by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometric data. It's this ultra personalized performance platform like no other. And you can get yourself 25% off as a running for your listener by going to insidetracker.com forward slash Tina. That's going to get you 20% off. You can also uh, learn more about how it works there. Um, you can get tested easily in many, many locations wherever you are. You're going to get the ultra personalized nutrition platform and a science-backed plan. You can go to insidetracker.com forward slash Tina to get that 25% off. And especially if you are marathon training this fall, this is a great idea to make sure you get to the start line healthy. There's so many um, people who are in recovery, who are working on their sobriety, who have so much wisdom and appreciation and gratitude and understanding of what really matters in life. It's, it's actually really amazing to see the lessons that are learned through that. And it's almost like when you've decided to make that choice or, or reach that point where, um, there's no other option, but to work on sobriety. Um, it's like it, uh, like speeds up or fast forwards a lot of the growth that humans would go through just over the course of years. Um, and it's really amazing, yeah, to hear things the way you're talking there are just things that um, just are so um, profound and deep and meaningful and can be applied to everyone, really. Um, and, you know, when you, you say that you were lifting weights and you got really fit, so running was, uh, how did running come into the picture there? Was it just the lifting wasn't enough or like what did you? Yeah, I was like, I was like, hey, powerhouse, like you guys need to these weights. We got we got to get more in here. You know, I need to be able to lift more. Can do you have 500 pounds? You know, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I was uh, I was lifting a lot and I was going down that road. I liked uh -huh. it. It was fun. And, you know, I was like six days a week in the gym. It was like, oh, wow, that is a lot. Um, yeah, I'm ridiculous. I know. It. <laughs> um, but it was um, uh, not a colleague. It was a client of mine in Chicago. Um through work work. Uh -huh. And he's like, Hey, you know, we we raise money for this, um, uh, foundation called move for hunger. It's a charity. Um, look it up. If you're listening to this move for hunger is really, they do great things. But <clears throat> so he's like, Hey, we're raising money as a company. We run every year, the rock and roll half marathon in Chicago. Um, you know, we're in the same industry. You could raise some money, blah, blah. blah. I think I ended up raising like 2,500 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to join them. And I just took the challenge number one, because it was, um, a client. And then number two, he's like, Hey, you're fit. You could do this. It's easy. And he's like, I do it. And he's like mm -hmm. six, four, like two twenty or two thirty or whatever he was at the time. And he's like, I'm, he's like, if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm like, sure, let's, let's try this thing out. And I think he, it was in July and I think he might've invited me to do it in, in like May. And so I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. I'm fit enough. I could do this. So that's when I was like, I started training, like I'm doing air quotes here. Um, <laughs> and training was this like, go outside, run two miles, whew, made it three miles tomorrow, four miles. And then, and I just ended up actually getting, catching a stress fracture in my foot. So like, mm. I was just determined to run this race though, because I had put it out there. I had raised money. So I rode a, I just rode the stationary bike and the elliptical for like four weeks leading up to the race. Didn't run at all because I couldn't. Um, and then I just threw some KT tape on, <laughs> Uh, like two days, before, <laughs> two, two days before I went to the doctor and she's like, Hey, you're going to need, um, like eight weeks or something or six weeks in this. At the time it was like 
that would have been two weeks after like oh, the race. Oh yeah, yeah. And then so I like I wish I had this on camera because I was like, so I'm probably just gonna race though anyway. So it was, what can I do to like help this? You know, whatever. She's like, well, I mean, I advise you not to, but I didn't anyway. Um, and I didn't feel any pain the whole time actually. And I ran a good time. My goal to work before I started to run when I was training, I, I wrote one twenty five on the back of like, you know, the Nike zoom threes that have like those digits on the back. Mm-hmm. I had colored them out and I did wrote one twenty five on the back. I'm like, I'm going to crush this. Had no idea how fast one twenty five was and ran one forty nine, which isn't bad. But yeah. it was just as you I mean, it's a big difference from one twenty five. Yeah, so then job. I was like, OK, I didn't die, didn't run the one twenty five. Maybe I can like maybe I could do something with this. And that's when I just started. I just kept after it. And it was kind of cool and fun. And before we go any further into that, yeah, I just sorry. want to ask a few questions along the way there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, one, that's a that's really amazing. That worked out for you with uh Ignoring the doctor's advice. I don't want to encourage people listening. Yeah, if the doctor do tells you not to do something, to just do it for the sake of it. Um, however, uh, so doing that first race, being in that first race experience, and we'll continue on with your journey. I definitely want to get to that. But uh, what was your impression of the running community? Because, you know, if you've been going in the gym every day for uh, six days a week, um, and then before that, if you were in a, you know, a place where you were around people who were drinking quite a bit, that again is a different community. So I'd love what, I mean, yeah. Be, what were your impressions of the running community when you first stepped in, in that race? Like, was well, it, yeah. it was super overwhelming because, of, you know, um, I, I just didn't have any, I mean, I had run a, like a 5k or something like that before and it was a smaller thing and it was with my sister and it was, I, it was, I wasn't thinking like run community, you know? Mm. And so like going into Chicago, it was, I mean, that's like the, that's a great race. Like a, the rock and roll thing is like a great race to start off. Cause it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. It's the atmosphere is crazy. There's 27 bands along the course mm-hmm. playing music. It just works out, but it just seemed like, during it, I'm like, wow, like this is crazy that so many people are doing that. Like we're all trying to do the same thing. You know, some people are doing it much faster. Some people are doing it much slower, but we're all trying to finish this like 13.1. And everybody was so like just open and gracious, you know, like when you went, when I went to the, to the exhibit hall or, or expo hall, um, the day before I'm like talking to random people and they're like, it's just so open. And it was exciting and inviting and mm-hmm. all that at one, all in one. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up like running next to this kid. I call him a kid cause he was like 17 at the time. And I'm 30, uh, like 34 or something like that or whatever that was like my math is terrible. So I was like 34 when I did this, he's 17. I'm running with him the whole time. And we're just talking. He's like real quick. I'll, I'll go back. But like at right around like nine miles, he's like, okay, when we get to like 11, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. So we should just drop down to this pace. We're just going to do that together. I'm like, all right, cool. And then like 11 miles came and he started, he's like, let's go. He takes off. I think I made it like 10 steps at that new pace. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you go ahead. We're fine. <laughs> and then but end, he ended up coming back to me. So that was kind of cool. Oh, but, really? um, Cause I think he was probably, he thought he was a little more fit than he was. Yeah. At the yeah. But um, it was just, it, I did. It was like, I, I don't think I was, uh, uh, open enough to like the, like I was so involved in like my moment and all that. But like, after looking back at it, you know, um, now I would have wished that it was a little more, um, diverse yeah. to be honest, you know, right. like um, yeah. not, not even like, cause at the moment I was like, this is great. Like I didn't care. You know, this is, it's not even about anything for me other than like, let's see if I don't die today. But then, you know, looking back at it, it's like, what a great race. What a fun experience. Um, turns out that some people that are friends now were actually there. But oh, it's right. thousands of people and mm-hmm. it's just so much going on. But like one of these days, I'd love for like someone's first race experience to be like, especially some a person of color to be like, man, it was so like, I would love for the first thought to be like, oh, so many of us. I didn't sit, feel like I, I didn't go there thinking like, wow, where are we? Like that wasn't my thought. I didn't feel like out of place. Mm-hmm. I just looking back, it would just have been nice in one of these days where you go to a major marathon or a mid sized something and you just everyone feels like, hey, this is where we all belong, you know, yeah. because the thought of 
everyone starting on the same start line, going to the same finish, hopefully, um, is such a, a, it's just, it just, it's baffling, like, to think that so many people do it. Like, Mm -hmm. you're like a 30,000 person race, Mm -hmm. you know, whether you're Kipchoge in the front, you know, running 201 or something in Berlin. And then the person that runs six, seven hours, you guys ran the same course and had the same overall goal, which is to finish, you know? And I just think that like, that is like, that's why running to me is just the industry necessarily, maybe not be all that welcoming and it's getting better, Mm -hmm. but just the act of running when you're running down the street, especially when you're at a a decent neighborhood with nice people, you get a wave, you know, and no matter what color, because we're all out here like struggling and trying to get better. Um, so yeah, yeah you might no, want to stop me. I'm rambling now. No, 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 no. I I appreciate it all, and and thank you for the for the honesty there. I mean, I know as a person of color, you are used to being in situations where you walk in and you might be the only person of color in the room, and and you're well aware of that. And all the white people around you, you know, have given no thought to that because it does make a difference when that's all you see. Uh, when everyone around you or a big chunk of people around you look the same of you, yet as you that yeah it doesn't a thought doesn't really go into that but it I, I'm glad you brought that up to to flip that and and for someone listening to be able to think like huh yeah like I probably would have been aware of the fact that if I was the only white person in you know with people of color all around me like I probably would have paid attention to that and you said it's it is moving in the right direction and we are but we need to continue like having conversations like this and continue challenging the running community and challenging the media to keep um to keep striving to change that um and i'm I'm glad you mentioned that and it is um uh good that we are finding ways to develop that and change it um because it does need to be changed and actually when i was in new york not too long ago um i absolutely loved Almost every situation I was in throughout that entire week, I was surrounded by such a diverse group of people everywhere I went. And it was, it felt like a snapshot of humanity. And it felt like I could just, I just loved how open people were. I loved the fact that I was running at one point and a man uh, at a November project workout came up uh, Mm -hmm. around beside me and he was like, oh, my husband's from, um, from the UK too. Like, where is, where is you, where are you from? And I just loved how, um, easily he said that to me. Like he wasn't, Mm. he wasn't like nervous to say it. He just said it. And, um, and yeah, so there was such a diverse crowd in New York, but obviously New York is always going to be the kind of leader there. But uh, yeah, I look forward to a day where we do see that everywhere, as you mentioned. And, um, it just makes things so much better in every way. Um, and so, yeah, I, uh, and so you do feel hopeful for the future that that's going to continue and, um, and we will be able to get to a place where, yeah, like you said, some new runner comes in and they, they feel immediately, um, whether it's conscious or subconscious welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, cause I think that, you know, especially for me and my journey with this, it's like first run, I probably didn't think about it much, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> as you in second, third race, then you start kind of looking because in the, the race atmosphere is really like, it's like if, if it's your first race and you're looking around, like looking for like, it's, it's, you're more worried about like what's in front of us. Like, so much stimulation you know, going like, on. Yeah. yeah. But like after you come to a few different races, it's just like, wow, there's not really many of us here, you know? And then you start kind of seeing it as you have more experience with it. Um, but I think that, you know, the running is, it's, I think it's headed in the right direction and I have hope for it. I just, I mean, conversations like this obviously help. I mean, cause conversation helps most things. <laughs> um, but then, uh, you know, I, th- I think that brands, um, that are coming at this from like a good place and not just like checking a box, um, will continue to help increase representation in the right way. Yeah. Um, because I mean, there is to, to me as a black person, um, there is a wrong way to show the representation and it, in uh, we, I can feel it when it's not a thing that like, that I attach to because just because a person, because a black person's on a picture or a magazine or something like mm. that, 
um, you can tell when it's just, or I can at least, or feel like I can when it's just something that they just had to do. Um, and as we get a, a farther away from 2020 um, and all that happened um, in the ground that we felt like was covered, I think we'll start seeing more companies or some companies will stand out as leaders in that space um, and just doing a better job at representing the running, the running world, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. like, cause it's, it's people, it's black folks out here running too. You know what I mean? So it's not like they're, they're just not doing it. It's just, we need to continue to have these conversations, but then in the black community too, I think it's super important for run clubs. Like we run three, one, three here in Detroit and, uh, you know, Knox's groups, wherever he is in the world, you know, in all these different run clubs that are popping up like six run five in Tennessee. And like, there's no disrespect to people that I don't know, but there's so many different run right. clubs out there that yeah. are young mm -hmm. and black and doing their thing like black men run, black women run mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. I think that is super important to continue to cultivate like that group in that base. Cause we're all able to run, you know, like it's not like there's, there's the race races aren't saying we can't run. It's just like the, the atmosphere around it just doesn't always like the run club atmosphere doesn't always feel very welcoming. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. that's where it is. Like, how do we get people that maybe ran in, in, in high school as track athletes that stopped running for 10 years? What what group would they go to where they feel like it's cool enough or to people look like them to go hang out and then yeah. find out like, wow, I can still run. So let's get out here, you know. Um, so I think it's double sided. It has to be the industry has to do a better job of making space. But then we in the communities as black folks too, need to create what we want to see. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. And there's, and there's clubs that are here doing it and more of that ha that happens, um, the better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it looks good and, uh, like things are moving positively and, and, uh, I think people can see through the brand and the media side of it as well. I mean, you can see when a photo has been placed in the, uh, I think it has, we are like, I guess it, for lack of a better phrase, like bullshit detectors uh, in 2021 for the most part are pretty decent at most things of reading what when companies are just trying to uh, manipulate us, be it for like environmental reasons or yeah, for, yeah. for things like that or just um, to just sell things. So I think we start, we're getting better at, at reading that. And um, I want to go on to talk about what you do with your business now, um, just to make sure we have enough time. Cause I cannot believe the time we're already uh, at. I, well, we, we talked about uh, pitching a movie for like did. 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so I, <clears throat> yeah, so you were running, um, you ran in this race, you obviously got hooked, continued with it. Um, but somewhere along the way, it became more than just something you did. Uh, for fitness, for sobriety, for health. Tell mm -hmm. us when things started shifting for you and, and how that came about. Um, yeah, so, I, I, so the shift from like, just like, um, just trying to be a better person and get out there and be active to like, you know, you, you mean like towards, like I can actually have some goals and do more with this. Um, I was meaning more just like, yeah, like you, you've eventually turned it into a business and you've got, yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about yeah. your podcasts in a minute. Um, well, yeah, it was, so it, was it was, it was, I think it was definitely, it was definitely last year. Um, I mean, cause you know, it, when you, cause I, in 2019, I ran like a 313 in my first marathon mm -hmm. and it, I mean, if it's fast or whatever, but then it's like, well, there's people out here running like 203, like, so this is not fast. So I didn't think much about it in that sense. And then as I was just like, as I was running with more people that looked like me and as I was talking to more people just through Instagram in general, um, then I started to realize that, you know, maybe my personality here and my ambition to run faster and the fact that I'm a young black guy in the Detroit area, maybe I have something to offer in the sense of like, um, not setting an example, but just doing some things and maybe, somebody will see it and like it and maybe they'll try or something, right? Just kind of just throwing it out there. And then 2020 was obviously a crazy year with the pandemic and it, it put 
everything in perspective. It made a lot of people zoom out and say mm-hmm. like, oh crap, like, you know, what's really important here? Should I, you know, should I start running? Should I be healthy? All this other stuff. <clears throat> but it was like, um, and then right behind that, the whole, you know, Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and so many different things happened last year that were like, just so it's like eye opening. And I yeah. needed to, I felt like I needed something that my kids could see me doing other than running that shows them that they maybe can do something crazy. Like why would I, me, like nobody go like, I'm going to start a clothing company, you know, and I'm going to sell stuff to people that, you know, like I'm not fast enough to tell anybody, you know, tell anybody to run, eat, sleep, repeat, you know, Mm -hmm. but I said, Hey, we're going to start this and do it. And I started it with like 200 bucks or whatever. And, bought some shirts and it worked out and people started buying them and it was cool and fun. And that led to me realizing like, Oh, people need help running, eating and sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they really do. Mm-hmm. Like, Cause I did, a, I did a, a, a run, eat, sleep week a couple of times. And I thought people would have trouble with the running a mile a day. But the fact that people had to like eat like a decent and hopefully vegan or vegetarian meal once a day and also try to get six to eight hours of sleep once a day or every night, for that seven days, that was the sleep and the and the food part was the hard thing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's baffling to me. Like, I could definitely eat a good meal and go to sleep, but people, it was a it was the other way around. So I'm like, well, maybe people need help thinking about this and seeing what the what the runners like. People that were running were like, I can't even sleep. I got five hours and that's <laughs> it. Um, so that made me open up the idea of like maybe I need to do a show and talk to people like yourself and say, like. Your, what's your expertise say about like the need for like some running smart and training properly? And then what about eating and diet and how does that affect people? And then sleep and recovery, because at the time or last year, 2019, I had no idea really what recovery was other yeah. than just like sit down, you know? <laughs> um, so that's how that the show kind of rolled in. And then the show seemed like it took its own. It definitely took a life of its own. And I started off talking to people that I had a r- real close range with, but then started reaching out to like professional runners and things and actually having some really cool conversations with some yeah. really dope people. Yeah. Um, and it just, now it's like three separate things. I got my own personal thing. I got the chip time running and then the running sleep show. And it just, it all started from me having that moment of like, I want to do something that we, me, my family like own. I can't pass my job of director of whatever to my son or my daughter, yeah. but I can pass this to them if it turns into something mm-hmm. or I can pass the idea to them that, you know, damn it, you could do like anything if you want, even if it fails, just try it, you know? Hey, did you know I love Tracksmith? No idea. Well, I'm not sure we've been friends long enough and not sure I spent enough time talking about it because I am such a big Tracksmith fan in every sense of the word. Uh, I've talked a lot recently about the journal, about the programs they offer, like the amateur support, the fellowship, uh, the newsletter, Hair AC. There is so much to love on the website, including even films, logbooks and stories that you can go check out and love. But I want to talk today about some of their products. You will be hard pressed to find a day that I am not wearing a Tracksmith item. I am wearing one right now as I sit talking to you. Um, I wear their shirts day to day, their tanks I am wearing just as on a regular basis. I love the Strata tank for these summer humid runs that dries really quickly. It's perfect for those summer runs. I love the Harriet uh, tanks. I love the Horizon tanks. I love the Twilight tanks. In case you didn't guess, I liked (laughs) tanks. I also run in a lot of their sports bras, the Run bra and the Alston bra are two of my favorites. And for the guys, there are plenty of different uh, shirts and options that you can be checking out and running, wearing day to day, and then going on to to run in. That's one of the benefits of these running clothes is that you can wear them day to day and then run in them. So you get double the use out of them. You can go to tracksmith.com and use code TINA15 to get yourself $15 off your order of $75 or more. Be sure to let them know that I sent you here. And just see what all the fuss is about. You will see why people love Tracksmith so much, including me. And pay attention because we have some exciting stuff we will be working on in the future. So go to tracksmith.com and use code TINA15. I want to do something that we, me, my family, like own. I can't pass my job of director of whatever to my son or my daughter. 
yeah. but I can pass this to them if it turns into something, mm-hmm. or I can pass the idea to them that, you know, damn it, you could do like anything if you want, even if it fails, just try it, you know? It, it Was any part of it, you said that you started this in like, uh, you said 2019 or 2020? 2020. Okay, so yeah. Was any part of that almost like a defiance because it would be very easy as a black man to take what happened to 2020 and especially having kids and be see it as, oh, you know, running could be dangerous for my kid. I don't want something like that to happen to my child. Mm -hmm. Like, was any of it that or was it, you know, again, you you know, I'm not I do not have the direct experience here. Is it that um, you already didn't? allow yourself to view things that way because then you wouldn't do anything um because of your safety yeah um i happen to live in an area that's decent for runners um i have had thoughts of like you know in the wrong spot or making sure that i announce myself or look very like smile and i don't feel like it Mm -hmm. just to make sure that they know it's like i'm just passing through whatever like Mm -hmm. i've never felt unsafe um, so I didn't have a moment or thought even to stop, but I felt like it was like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, there's some worry there. Like, especially after Ahmad, I was like, this is crazy. You know, like, do I have, like, I got to worry about dogs. Now I got to worry about like white folks and pickup trucks. Um, not all white folks, and pickup trucks, by the way, but it was just like the, the visual of seeing that happen was just wild to me. And it's like, now we have to watch out for dogs, cars, and other people, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I just kind of, I mean, I just, I'd never thought to stop. Um, and I felt like that's what made me lean into more. I was never had like a thought to be like an activist or like, mm-hmm. you know, or mm-hmm. speak on like issues like this, mm-hmm. but it was just, I'm not going to stop because of it. Mm-hmm. And if anything, like more of us should be like, let's, let's get into this so that, moments like that don't just happen less because yeah. i mean if in that neighborhood like just just say um if there was 10 people that ran through that neighborhood every day and four of them were black you know what would that have happened yeah you know if it was a more if it was a a thing you know so we i mean the way that i feel like some of the way that you make some of this um easier for people is just by doing it yeah. and just being there. Yeah. yeah. You know, it yeah. just is Which, what it is, you know? Yeah. And that shows, like you were saying earlier about some of that, um, you know, the groups coming up, people taking charge, taking that, uh, role of being a leader, um, and yeah, making it, making the, the running population, making, uh, all parts of every part of America in the world, um, be more diverse rather than yeah like breaking those molds of pockets of places yeah. um, it's like because it's like one of the things like when we run with we run three on three um there's like a group of 100 plus young black people out there running mm-hmm. and you see you know other black folks driving by old young whatever honking their horns and mm-hmm. it feels great especially last year but it feel, even still to this day like people are excited to see people like us out there yeah. um, and doing right. something positive. Yeah. And it's cool that that happens, but at the same time, it's like you feel if you take a moment, you realize like that's kind of crazy because it's not normal yet. You know, like yeah. we, we have to normalize black bodies in the space, yeah. in the outdoor space in general. Definitely. So it's not, so it's just, a thing this Uh is what it is we're Uh out here it's nobody owns this sidewalk like that or a street where we can't run on we're out here and the more people that groups and individuals that are just doing this every day showing up to these races um that is we just got to keep pushing like you know Mm -hmm. just keep going Okay. So keep pushing at the beginning of the hour, we mentioned, you mentioned balance, you mentioned stepping back, zooming out. You mentioned that when you do things, you go for them. You've clearly shown that with not only taking on one element of this, but you said you have your thing, run, eat, sleep, and then chip time. So you've Mm -hmm. done that. Um, one more thing along in this area. And then I want to just finish off talking about yeah, you said about some of the guests you've had. It's been pretty, pretty incredible to how 
quickly you've grown. Um, mm-hmm. Is any part of that, um, that go, 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 that being able to, unable to, to back off, um, having a hard time with some of the, the previous stereotypes that are, have been placed on, uh, on black men in particular, like you think that's reasons that you in particular have a hard time backing away from like taking time off or um, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think that, you know, maybe I, if, if I probably later on when you, when I think about that question more, I'll probably be like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but I think that it's like, for me, I just, it's a personality trait for me. And I, I placed that with, you know, alcohol yeah. that was like exhibit a, you know, that when I do something, I'm doing it all the way, you know, like if you leave a mm-hmm. bottle here at this house, <laughs> you come back tomorrow, it's probably not going to be here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that that was, um, and I always thought that that was a bad trait. You know, I always thought that like the fact that I, I latch on to something and then I push, 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 thought it was a bad thing because I was applying it to something very negative, yeah. you know, alcohol. And until I stopped that and started placing it on like health and fitness and, um, meditation and runny sleep show and chip time running and Tommy runs and BQ or whatever. And dedicating time to like try to be on podcasts and all that to just have conversation about sobriety, veganism, and just life in general. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when some of these things that we think that maybe about ourselves are negative traits. Mm-hmm. Um, they're good things. Yeah. Like I think that, you know, you talked about the vibe in the beginning. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, we don't, I don't look at that as a negative thing in the way I am or the way that some people that I know are, that happen to look like me. We have a vibe in this, like, so we just, I just feel like we move different or the same as each other, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if you look at the wrong way, that's negative and it could be negative. It could be perceived as negative. Yeah. You know, if we come to a race and we're acting like how we act, you know, it could be perceived as negative and, it's not normalized, um, right? It's not normalized. So we just have to, you know, I don't think that I purposely push for farther, but I know for sure that I, I am very intentional in trying to make sure I sound like me, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. at work work, sometimes you have a moment where you're like, I change how I maybe go at a sentence um, and, or just change like the vibe in a conversation to make sure that they're comfortable. Yeah. You know, but in this space, for sure. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that I talk like how I feel comfortable, Mm -hmm. um, respectfully Mm -hmm. so that it can be heard. But then at the same time, like this person, this me is like, um, it's, it's just, it would be more normalized. And, you know, part of the, you talked about like kind of a rebellion in a sense, like I've always kind of wanted to grow my hair before, you know? Um, and in most business settings or just in general, like longer black hair Mm -hmm. is, um, it's like, it's, I don't think it's maybe not a negative, but it just looked at differently. Like, Oh, like this person is rougher because it's not like they, it's, I I can't can't really explain it. I don't want to, you know, miss like, uh, just talk about it in um, in the wrong sense. But I felt like me saying like, Hey, I'm just going to grow my hair out for a little bit longer this time than I ever had and see what happens with that that was an act of rebellion for me in a sense, because. Which is crazy. Like, if you think I'm about like, it. Yeah. Cause like, I don't, you know, it, one, okay, here's a story and I'll just be real. And if I get weird stuff about it, that's fine. <laughs> so like I was watching the news one day and it was a young kid on there that they were, that had done something on the news. I think he was like 16 years old. And at the time his hair was the same length as mine and almost exactly the same hairstyle. Right. And he did whatever he did out of whatever, for whatever reason he did it. Um, and I've from the same areas that he grew up in and got caught in. And I know what he's, I know what he's thinking. Cause I've been there, you know, and I didn't do what he did, but I've been close to yeah. certain things. Yeah. And then I thought about like, you know, my work work and people even on Instagram or whatever that see me from a distance if they saw me and they saw him on this TV, they'd be like, Tommy isn't one of them, like one of those, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and that is like, I was like, I am though, you know what I'm saying? Like we are, it's, it is like, if you grew up in the same areas as 
lot of us grow grow up and we see so many different things. And luckily for some of us, we move in a different direction and, and end up different and like out of that like lifestyle. Like one choice. But Amazing. it's just, we need to normalize just like all different black beauty and, yeah. and stuff. It's just, this is, I'm going way left here, but it's just like, that's my, that's more where my, where my rebellion comes in is I want to be exactly who I am and who I feel comfortable around as around my friends that love and know me, yeah, my family yeah, and don't want to have to change that just to like fit into a run club or something like that. Absolutely. You know, yeah. um, is what it is. No, thank you so much for sharing that. And that's so true. And, um, I mean, we're all guilty of, of judging someone too quickly or, um, an example I have is, uh, uh, when I was on a plane with my daughter, uh, my, she was like maybe one at the time when I, uh, a few years ago, um, and she was just having a meltdown. And I remember feeling so like everyone's staring at me, everyone's judging me, mm -hmm. but I knew that when I was a 19 year old girl, I had been with that mother with crying like, Oh, for God's sake, can you not control yeah. your child? Yeah. And I know I'd had those thoughts and maybe I'd even rolled my eyes. Maybe I'd be even like at them. Yeah. Um, but we've all done things like that. We've all, yeah, had that moment where we could have done something that we knew wouldn't be good for us, but it just, you know, uh, it just, we made the choice we make and it could be a small thing that, you know, made a, a big difference, but, um, you're right. Uh, uh, things, I mean, the conversations are happening now, which is good. And even mm -hmm. the fact that, um, about the Olympics and the, the swim caps that were banned, while that's a, a obvious negative that, um, these swim caps aren't allowed, that's obviously it, it did get national media and it will spark a conversation for future. So, um, at least this is happening, but we still, yeah, have a, a long, long, long way to go. Yeah. Um, so thank you for, for sharing and, and, you know, being a part of that. As you said, uh, the more we normalize this, the more we have these conversations, the, the further along we, we, we move things. Yeah. Um, so to finish off talking about, uh, run, eat, sleep, uh, you have a very impressive guest list. You've said you've had some amazing people. Um, I just want to focus in on Billy Yang for a moment. You had okay. him on your show. Billy um, doesn't do many interviews. I, I, know, I, I heard know. that. Yeah. I heard that. I so, don't know why he said yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, and you had him on, it was pretty, I mean, you haven't had that many episodes out. So it was pretty early you know, in your. Well, I think, I think oh. I've had like, I've had like 53 or something like that. And yeah. I think he might've been like 42. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah. uh, that's very early on to get someone on your show, like, like yeah. Billy, who doesn't do many. Um, but I would love to talk about, yeah, like what put us in your mind when you're in that moment when, you know, Billy Yang pops up and says, hi, um, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, or, you know, Sarah Hall or someone else who you have maybe seen doing incredible things and thought, oh, you know, that's really cool, but I'll never get to speak to that person. So I just want to put it in the perspective of other people listening who might see someone uh, uh, that they admire and think, oh, I could never do something like that. But you, within a short space of time, have managed to turn something into a, a pretty amazing product or service here. So yeah. talk about what that was like. Well, I'm annoying as hell. So like, I'll, <laughs> I'll follow up. If you don't tell me to stop, I'm going to keep following up. Oh, yeah, me um, too. <laughs> but I think that it was, you know, it's, it's like for just for, you know, for Billy, for instance, it helped though that he, when he when he got on the live, his camera was turned the wrong way so he was like sideways on my thing that helps kind of ease the break the ass a little bit but i think especially that, for him he he likes to get things yeah i know when i, I was recorded like, i recorded I was, with him in person once and he was like are you sure it's recording and i was like yep it's recording are, are you sure it's recording are, i was like yes Billy, be sure it's recording. <laughs> but sorry he's, continue. Like, <laughs> he's like make sure you get this <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> yeah no i think that like i go into it because i've i've been watching i watched billy's videos for you know, a couple yeah. of years up to that point and as soon as i started running i got linked to like his videos and rich roll because rich roll's lifestyle is very similar to like my trajectory or whatever like mm -hmm. you know sober running you know Mm -hmm. um vegan, vegan um yeah. so like I, I mean i'm nervous in you know but then i'm not like trying to impress them really like i want to do a good job i want to make sure make sure that they feel like you know it was worth their time but i'm not like they, i'm not here to like 
you know, to ask these amazing questions and like whatever. I'm just a normal person that's like I talk like this on the show and I try to just ask questions that I feel like I'm interested in because I know that so many people probably are thinking the same thing I'm thinking about this person, you know? And I'm not asking Sarah Hall what her VO2 max is. <laughs> um, and I don't I don't really need to get into like the workouts because I mean I can't I can't do any of those. My VO2 max is probably forty whatever is lower than hers, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't connect to her for that reason, but I connect to her and, you know, Bill Yang and all these other people because we're all out here just trying to be like the best version of whatever that thing is. So I just kind of try to relax and it's a little nerve wracking in the beginning when you first start talking to Abdi, cause mm -hmm. he just seems like he's probably going to try to kill you through the thing or whatever. <laughs> Um, because he just seems so competitive. Like he's like he was one of the weirder interviews because like one of my favorites because he just I could tell like how competitive he was based on all of his answers. Mm -hmm. And you could tell he was trying to like pull it back, which is weird. I'm like, he's not actually saying what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to talk to that person like mm -hmm. directly. Um but just take a chance, um, be prepared for him, uh have some some questions obviously, but just let it like I just try to let it happen too, because if you're listening to someone talk and you're not just waiting for them to finish to say whatever else that next question is. So in yeah. 2019, <laughs> like, you know, um, you ran a 202, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I just try to relax and be myself and let them be themselves too, because I feel like there's, I've seen a lot of interviews with people where they don't really even get to like be themselves. It's like the same questions over and over mm -hmm. Um, and it's never really about them. Like, it's like, it is, but it's not like, it's about like their ability and what like that ability means to me. Like, what can you do for me? Like, tell us what to do, you know, but it's like, Hey, like, how did you start running? Like, when did you realize you were like, you know, fast? When did you realize that you connected with this thing and how much has it changed your life? You know, all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just try to approach it as just normal as hell, yeah. <laughs> you know? No, you do a great job. And, and I love that you also put yours on um, Instagram so yeah, tough, people can tough, watch though. it. It's tough. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, how it's do you tough. do that? Like you it's, set the phone next tough. to the computer? Yeah, no, it's tough. Like I, I, I don't, I don't want to reveal your trade secrets. No, like, I think about it like every time because like, your podcast will sound, it sounds so much better than mine because it's professional. You know, mine is like <laughs> my actual podcast is probably like, it's like makeshift. <laughs> it's, like, it's a recording of a conversation through a thing. It just sounds weird sometimes. So I sacrifice the quality of like the recording for the live version, which I love so much because I think people, people can love ask that. questions. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm a get I'm a host that actually tries to answer the questions mm -hmm. too. Like no shade, but like I'm not smart enough to like have hours worth of questions. So it's like I love when people jump in and ask like Billy, like, hey, you know, what was your favorite oh, yeah. video that you did? And I mean, because then you get to answer. It's a community. This the running thing. That's one thing about the running industry. It's it is a community, but it's real. It's always been separated, and like mm -hmm. you don't really get to talk to them. You see them at a panel. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you get to ask yeah. like one. You know, if you get yeah. in line, you're brave enough. Yeah. Hey, bring it all together. Live sessions. Ask us some questions. I'll shout your name out or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a fun thing, and this should all be fun. They want to feel normal too, you know, like, you know, Sarah Hall is a normal person. She wants to feel normal. She doesn't want to feel like she's like the person that everybody's like looking at, like, let's have a conversation. Yeah. And people so. love that, like listening, watching, being a part of something and knowing, I mean, we all know how that feels to mm -hmm. have someone that you really admire and know that they see your name and they see your mm -hmm. question and someone like you ha shouts their name out and says that question. I mean, that feels good to any of us. Um, so yeah, I, I love that you do that. And, um, I mean, let's just take that there then. So, uh, you've got many, many places people can go find you. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll put lots of links in the show notes, but just so they can go find a few right now, where can people go find you? I would say uh, go to Instagram because that's where I hang out the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all, all the cool kids hang. Um, <laughs> it's uh, at Tommy Runs, uh, at Tommy underscore Runs. And that's M-M-I-E. T-O-M-M-I-E-R-U-N-Z. So I'm fancy on both sides. Um, <laughs> and then uh, just check out um, at, at chiptimerunning.com. So, yeah. you know, chip time, like when you finish a race, chip time running. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's where, the, that's probably the best place to go. And then the run, eat, sleep show, mm-hmm. literally on Instagram mm-hmm. at the run, eat, sleep show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, please reach out if you have people, if you want to be on the show and you're cool and you're fast and you want to talk, hit me up. Um, but if you have just feedback about like anything, like, mm-hmm. um, it's just really cool to like, to do these. I really appreciate being on your show and I, I love people like hit me up after a podcast and say like they, they connected to like the most random thing. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even, number one, I didn't remember I said that. <laughs> like the last podcast I did, I said out loud, apparently that, oh man, outside of running, I'm a catastrophe. Like, <laughs> like who says that? And then the per- the first response I got was, oh my gosh, to hear you say that and then continue that thought. I related to this in so many yeah. ways. Thank you so much. So hit me up. I'm here. That's funny. And I uh, will be willing to bet there'll be a lot of those coming through right now. Um, as you have said, so many things that will connect to people. I'm very confident of that. Um, I hope so. Jeez. And, uh, <laughs> and when our movie comes out about shoes, everyone mm-hmm. go out and see it and make sure you say that we were the, we, we were the original ideators of this. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for all that you do for being such a positive light in this world. I appreciate you so much. And uh, I'm excited to share your story with those of the listeners who don't already know it. So thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we end this episode, I just want to take a moment to shout out my podcast editor, Jeremy Nessel, who has done such a wonderful job of looking after my podcast, taking out all the mis- mishaps in the episodes while still keeping in the the vulnerability and the realness and the rawness of the conversation. This is not one of those podcasts where I take out the ums and the errs and the the sometimes the delay in, in words because I think it's very important to keep that authenticity. We're surrounded by perfected and manicured everything and I think it's really important that running for real stays that way so thank you to Jeremy for your work I also want to thank Maria Vargas and Amber Moore who are also part of my team they've been a big part of this community and me being able to build this brand so just want to give them a shout out too all right let's get right back to the end of this episode Thank you so much to Tommy for joining me today. I highly encourage you to go check out him on Instagram, on social media, to go listen to his podcast, check it out. And it's really cool that you get to watch it on Instagram. uh, So you get to see more behind the scenes than you would typically get with another podcast. That guy is doing special things. I know it. And I can't wait to see what the future holds from here. I want to thank Beam, Inside Tracker, and Tracksmith for sponsoring this episode. Beam, you can get uh, 15% off your order by going to beamtlc.com and using code TINA. You've heard me talking about their Elevate Hydration series, and I'm really, really enjoying those. As I mentioned before, I am currently testing out the CBD products, so I will be reporting back to you with that. Um, and I want to thank Inside Tracker. Inside Tracker helps me keep on top of how my body is doing from the inside, make sure that while I'm doing marathon training, while I'm doing my uh, all kinds of things that I'm fitting into my life, I am looking after my body and making sure that it is in the place it needs to be and then making the tweaks based on what they recommend. You, for a limited time, my friend, can get 25% off Inside Tracker by going to insidetracker.com forward slash Tina. That will get you 25% off your order. That's a massive discount. So be sure to go to insidetracker.com forward slash Tina. And finally, our dear friends at Tracksmith. Thank you to Tracksmith for sponsoring this episode. You can get $15 off your order of $75 or more by going to tracksmith.com and using code Tina15. There are some of my favorite items out there that I'm always talking about. And you can just go check them out. So thank you to those sponsors. Thank you to Tommy. I will see you on Monday for another Together Run.